Welcome one. Welcome all to my podcast, focusing on your favorite sports and your favorite athletes on their Olympic journey. This is the road to Tokyo. This is 2020 Vision. Hello and welcome to episode 12 of 2020 Vision. On this week's episode, we have the fabulous athletes Anna Blackwell and Katie Hayward, both race walkers, which leads me to something that I've been planning on doing for a while, and that's talking a little bit about my background. So I started off at the age of, well, nine, under nines in Little Athletics down in Elizabeth Little Athletics Club, now Playford, uh, and we... Uh, started off doing the race walking the 1100 went on from there and I wasn't uh, I'm not hating on mum for this but I wasn't allowed to go to states until under 12s she was just a bit worried about the idea of losing which is fair enough and we hear that from um, athletes we we do not like it when it comes to uh, having those issues with losing it does affect our uh, mentality and stuff like that so we waited I ended up competing in my um, under 12 state final 1500 meter walk and I won. I think I only won by 0.3 of a second, but hey, I got the gold and it kind of pushed me further in life to want to achieve. Uh, I went back the next year under 13s and I got that silver. So that kind of pushed me um, again to continue. And then from 50, uh, under 14s, 15s, 16s and 17s, I managed to get the gold. Um, got a couple of state gold medals, but it was just the idea of the, the mentality. And even and during that time watching Olympians compete, I just enjoyed seeing these uh, and, and seeing these guys do what they do and the mentality in a sense um I, I just, i'm constantly on about this mentality thing and that's what i talk to people about so um why not jump into my first chat uh with race walker uh anna blackwell so anna's a young up-and-coming athlete she's just won gold at the Oceania champion championships uh so yeah here she is anna blackwell do you mind telling us how you got started as an athlete I started Lou Athletics in about under 12, and I never really was great at race walking, but Rosie saw my technique and thought, hey, you should give it a go, and we really just went from there. Rosie being your coach? Yes, Rosie Coleman, who's also Alice Randall's coach, who I think he interviewed a few weeks ago. There we go. No, that's that's good. So, um, Little Athletics, do you mind telling us about your club? So I go to East Derwent, well, I used to go to East Derwent Little Athletics Club, which is also the same one as Alice, coincidentally. Yeah. And yeah, just a really great club, very small, but it meant that I got to know everyone in my age group really well. The smaller the better, I say. Like the way it works better when you're in a smaller organisation. So, where did you go from little athletics? They obviously seen that you had potential. Um, was it yourself that took you to the next level, or you had your coach? Yep, so I started training with Rosie and for the first few years I was race walking in the last so I wasn't great. And then I ended up winning and getting the meet record in 2015 and under 15 championships, I think. And then I transitioned into senior interclub, which is of the weekend still, into the Elva Julians Association, which is also Rosie's club. And then I just sort of started to go from there competing at state competitions and eventually at national competitions and international competitions. Is there anyone that you've looked up to um, during your time as a race walker that's just pushed you that extra mile? Yeah, so definitely Jane Bird Smith and Jemima Montag. I saw them both at the Commonwealth Games win and it was just, it was sort of a bit of a turning point for me. I started to train harder and I wanted to get to where they were. Now, we know that Dane has his um, bird thing that he does at the end of his races. Is there anything that you reckon you could whack out if you won a big race? Oh, I don't know. I'll probably just cry, to be honest. <laughs> just be so excited. <laughs> no, it would be an exciting moment. Now, have you, had any, have you had any of those so far in regards to winning the big titles that you want to tell us about? Um, I think last year at the National Road Walking Championships, I've had a longest string of fourth places and to go into that competition and to finally end up with that bronze medal it just gave me the confidence I needed to keep going and do well at the next competition and it was just such a big moment for me because I've, I've seen Alice win medals and my other training partner Will Robinson just win national medals as well and it was just a great moment to finally have a medal I guess. 
that yeah, it, it is an amazing um it's an amazing feeling when you get that chance to stand up on the uh, the podium no matter what if it's third second or first like it's still you've accomplished something there um is there any words of advice that you've been given growing up that you just took with you uh, through your races i was always told a mantra um accuracy before speed you always got to think that um so is there anything that you've been told um, not like one thing that stands out, like one phrase, but it's just really, the technique does come before the speed because in race mm. walking it is such a technical sport. Yeah. No, definitely. So, um, you've got nationals coming up at the end of the year. Do you mind telling us about what, um, you're doing in regards to planning for that? Yep. So I've got nationals in about eight weeks, which is the road walking championships again. Um, I'm just to the point, I've just come out of the Oceania championships, so we're just having a little bit of a break at the moment and just starting some light training, but I've also just had some um, minor surgery, so it's just really trying to slowly come back into training at the moment, but it's going to start building up and I'm going to start doing the longer distances because over the next year or so i need to start transitioning into the 20 kilometers yeah there is that push that sadly we need to make as race walkers in regards to the extra length and it does hurt our bodies but um yeah it sounds like you've got it in you in regards to mentality now what would you like there we do have issues in regards to when it comes to the mental um the mental part of, of race walking and not only that but athletics in general what do you do to push yourself that extra step to, you know, if you wake up in the morning, you're not quite feeling right. What do you do um, to push yourself across the line to make sure you're feeling okay? Um, just making sure I'm getting in, like, the night, right nutrition, right food, water, sleep, and just if I'm not feeling like it, I know I just need to get on the track because it's, once you start, it's so much easier to keep going. It's just getting to that start point and just, pushing just thinking about where I want to get the only way I'm gonna be a great race walker or do the good times that I want to do is if I train hard so I just have to keep that in mind is there anything that you do with yourself in your spare time apart from race walking uh yes so in the last probably six months I've taken up rowing so I've started rowing with my school club and as I'm in year 12, I've finished rowing with them and I've started rowing with the Tasmanian University Boat Clubs. So that's really exciting and I didn't intend to become competitive with it, but I'm a competitive person and one thing led to another and I've started rowing competitively. Awesome. So do you hope that goes any, any further or you just want to use it as a sort of side thing to do? Yeah, so I started doing it just as a bit of cross-training because I was getting quite a lot of injury. But as I've become, you know, I've got a little bit better with it and I've really enjoyed the team atmosphere compared to the individual nature of race walking. And I'm just sort of just keeping it calm, I guess. I don't, I don't want to push to go too far in it. I'm just going to see where it takes me. I like that. Well, it sounds like you've got good, the good mentality to continue further on in life, and I wish you the best of luck um, in the future. Is there any words of advice that you would offer um, athletes that are just starting out? Because you're you're on a journey at the moment where you're, you're pushing through and doing these events. What would you say to the person that's just starting to pick up race walking? Just keep going. I had years of just not being, not really going anywhere, but you have a breakthrough at some point. So just really just keep trying and pushing yourself to be better and don't compare yourself to others quite so much well i thank you very much for joining me for a chat and um thank you for listening to 2020 vision i know that you are you've listened to a, an episode or two so i appreciate it and thank you thank you bye there we had Anna Blackwell, a very promising race walker with a very promising future. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what she has to achieve. And speaking of promising people, my next chat is with Katie Hayward, who's just come off of a World University Games gold uh, medal. So it's cool to be chatting with her about that. Um, I definitely enjoyed this chat. Very much uh, a lot of similarities between myself and her growing up. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this. Uh, here she is, Katie Hayward. Congratulations on your gold medal that you've just uh, received um, uh, in Italy. Do you mind telling us about how that felt? Um, 
Yeah, I'm still looking for the words, <laughs> to be honest. Um, but I think just crossing that line just really, I don't know, it just, yeah, it was just one of those moments that you just take it all in and just like, wow, how did I get here? It's just an insane moment that not many people can, you know, really ever experience. Um, and to see, and seeing my coach like there and um, people that have supported me throughout this journey and then also looking behind and seeing Jem cross the line and hugging her and holding the Australian flags together first and second was like, yeah, like I said, an amazing moment in time that I would never forget. It was such an amazing, yeah. Winning, winning, those, winning those sorts of things kind of makes you flash back a bit and think about where you came from. Do you mind telling us where you started? Um, so I started 10 years ago, actually, 2009, at Gold Coast Little Athletics. Um, so I did a bit of cross country behind that. So I had like, you know, a little cross country background. So fitness was pretty all right. And yeah, one night I heard that there was like, this walk and it was like an 1100 meter walk. And I'm like, okay, it's just like, you know, a walk. And they're like, no, it's actually a sport. Like, you know, you got to actually try and they show me the sort of style and I'm like, okay, well, it was only 1100 meters. I'm like, okay, I should be able to last this. And I hopped in the race and I don't know, it's, I think it's, everything just came together. Like I just picked it up and I went straight to the front and I won. And I think any 11 year old girl or no, so any nine year old girl would think, wow, like whoever white wins, you know, it's like, well, what is this sport? This is cool. Um, and this man came up to me and said, um, wow, you really, you know, you picked that up very fast. Um, you know, I run like walking clinics and on Wednesdays if you ever like want to come. And I was like, yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> you know, I was pretty proud of myself. So I'm like, sure, I can give this a go. And fast track 10 years later, he's my coach today. So, um, yeah, we've been together for 10 years and it's been amazing journey to share all these crazy moments together who's the co who's the coach in question uh, my coach is Steve Langley so yeah he comes to all my competitions domestically and traveling all around the world out of his own money and it's insane and he doesn't even want me to pay for any sessions he just does it because he loves it and I think that's amazing thing well that's amazing yeah. and you've said before yeah. that it was cool to see like when you crossed that line seeing him at the end what what, yeah. what was the first like genuine feeling that you got of success doing the sport after that um, under nine race that you did um what, what, did you go on and then do state finals and stuff like that um after the little flicks little yeah walk. yeah um so walking totally in high school so i am years after that I just did a little athletics and then once I got to high school it, there was 1500 for states and then you did 3k for nationals mm. and um I won the 1500 meters at states which um again was it's insane because I actually broke the record as well <laughs> so that was um an amazing um like a little boost to start off like my walking little career in high school and then yeah, from there we went to nationals at the end of the year and I came second, um, which I think in hindsight was probably the best thing that's ever happened because it just made me more hungrier. Um, and then the year after that, I kept coming second, second again, and then 2015, um, my, I got my first ever gold at Sydney Olympic Park for the Sydney for Australian Juniors. And yeah, since then, I hate saying it, but I haven't come behind anyone since. So in my age group, and I give it all the credit to my coach and his planning and patience with me. And yeah, <laughs> no, that's awesome. So what um, you talked about hunger there? What's the sort of yeah. what's the sort of thing that fuels you? What makes you keep going? Obviously, you had those second um, place. That would have been one of those things. Is there anything else that you use to push yourself forward? having long-term goals um it's weird that i say but when i was nine i was like would it be great if i could be olympian one day mm. and i think that's always stuck with, i think that's always stuck with me um so i always see 
neck competitions as like stepping stones. So if I can get to this stage, then okay, I'm on my way. And that just gives me that extra hunger that I'm in the right direction and I'm, yeah, I'm moving up the ranks. So, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. I like that mentality, especially at the age of nine. I'm pretty sure I was only keen on playing video games and stuff like, stuff like that. So <laughs> it's good that you had that idea. Um, yeah. So what are you? Uh, what do you do in your downtime? I know you can't be walking all the time. So what do you do? <laughs> you are a university student, hence why you went to the university games. Do you mind telling us what yeah. you study? Um, so uh, this year I actually went full-time to part-time just because of um, – you know, international competitions, of course. Um, so I study occupational therapy and I'm in my second year at uni with that. And yeah, so I do that um, when I'm not walking, of course. And yeah, I'm enjoying that and I'm doing placements this year in aged care and home care. And yeah, it's something that I have and also another massive passion with. I love helping people and I also love helping and just see people improve their daily life because um, I can relate to it a little bit as well myself where uh, a couple of years back I actually had a major stress fracture myself and I was out of the sport for um, quite some time, about nine months and yeah, just not being able to walk was something that I saw as part of my identity and I yeah I couldn't even run so I had to pick up swimming um, three times a week and then on had to go on the bike and just seeing, you know, people that I train with be able to train just annoyed me, frustrated me, it made me more hungry. And then the year after that, I came back and yeah, and I won. <laughs> I won my I won stakes again. And I think just with that, it just gave me the extra hunger that okay, if I could push myself through other things like cross training and come back stronger, um, I wanted to help people that you know have gone through like you know strokes or you know people passing and just don't want to get back on their feet. I just want to show, like, you know, things are possible. You just got to have grit, determination, and, you know, we're all here, to, and I'm here to help you succeed in whatever you want. So that's, yeah, why I chose to study OT. Compassion is compassion is somewhat yeah. lost in the sport nowadays, and um, it's good to yeah. hear that you um, you keep that in your – you keep in your stride and you, you choose to follow that sort of path. I love that. Yeah, yeah, so that's what I yeah, decided to do. Uh, yeah, grateful. But apart from like studying, I was you know I, I, I work a little bit um, part time at Coles um, in the deli, and I also work in the checkouts. And then when I'm not working, you know, as a normal teenage girl, I hang out with my friends. So I'm from the Gold Coast, so you know I go to the beach or go to cafes, go on hikes. Just I love keeping active. I love going outside. It's yeah, it just gives me, I'm like an extrovert, so it gives me the energy to get through my day instead of like, you know, being locked in the house and not doing anything, so. <laughs> Minus the uh, ch the teenage girl growing up on the Gold Coast, you've pretty much described my childhood growing up. I was also a Coles boy and uh, did check out in Delhi. Um, race wa I race walked as well and all that sort of stuff, so it's cool. And as well, I work in disability care, so um, there you go. Um, that's, re that's really awesome to hear. I like that. That's cool. similar yeah exactly no well i don't have um any gold around my neck uh but that's fine um so what's next for you we've got 2020 that's obviously an aim and a goal yeah so that's a major goal um but before that um i have doha um yes year, um, definitely the world um athletics championships where i'll be doing the 20k walk um at 11 30 at night so that's going to be a different whole new experience for me um Apparently it's going to be very, very hot, so like like 30, high 30 degrees, I think, but could be wrong. Um, That's a, that is a different time, 11.30 at night. Whose idea was that? Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah no. <laughs> um, I think just because um, Doha during that time is very hot, so okay. um, I think they're ch trying to choose the most coldest part of the day, so yeah, okay. 11.30 at night is, yeah, I guess. <laughs> there you go. So, so, yeah. um, I have to ask the question, is there anyone that in the sport or even outside the sport um, that you look up to um, as an athlete? Um, I look up to two people. Um, one would be my fellow teammate, Jemima. I look up to her so much because she's not just an amazing athlete that we all know of, <laughs> yep. but um, 
She's just an um, yeah, amazing role model. Like, I think sharing every 20k I've done, we have shared the same room together. Mm. And I think people think if oh, if you're sharing a room with your you know fellow teammates, that'd be awkward. But with her, I mean, it's not at all. Um, we lift each other up and we support each other through our highs and lows. And yeah, like we went on a t- day trip to Capri together. We we go out to dinner. We do lots of things together and I think also just having her support um, leading up to the race was something that I couldn't ask for anything better because yeah she made me um, feel less stress and I made her feel less stress and we got to the line together thinking okay let's do this and then throughout the race I think it was like 8k or 6k and she was like let's go we've got these girls um, we work we work this hard and I'm like yes we have and yeah, we just worked through the race together, and yeah, I think had we not her, you know, could have could have could have easily been a different story. So, no, so yeah. I saw there was a bit of uh, there wasn't much of a time difference between you two. Was there a discussion at all, saying who's going to take it, or it's just you shot off in the end? Um, yeah, I think I don't know. I don't know what really happened to like how I was thinking the race. I just decided to put a little burst on and. Hmm. Then, yeah, I took the lead, I guess. But no, there was no discussion about when I was going. I think that's just how sport at the end of the day turns out. But yeah. Yeah, but... Yeah. I, I always relate it to Dane, Dane Bird Smith in the 2018 Commonwealth Games where he hit that concrete at the end and that's when he took off and he was alongside yeah. Tom Bosworth for, for ages and then bang, straight ahead. So it was just weird how it, it, it all takes... And, and you look at the time between you two girls in that event and it was very close. Yeah, yeah, exactly. She um, did an amazing, amazing race as well. It was very hot out there, so mm. to get second at well, it's it's an incredible performance, and I'm um, so grateful to share that with her. Um, Be- beautiful venue yeah, as well. Was, yeah. yeah, it was an amazing experience, just hugging her and um, just seeing her smiling and seeing us happy and seeing everyone around us smiling and happy as well. I was like, oh, this is such an amazing time to start uh, stay well and enjoy, so... Yeah, but yeah. back to her being an amazing role model. Um, you know, she she studies well. She's you know got the top top marks she can get in year twelve, and she's just a grounded, all around beautiful person to be around. And I feel myself runner, which is good to have. Not have to pretend to be someone else, or yeah, I can just be my weird, quirky self. And she accepts that, and that's really cool to have. It's okay to be weird. So, who's number two? Who's the person? That, who's the other person that you look up to? Um, I don't know if you know her, but she's a, a professional surfer, Bethany Hamilton. The name ring, the name does ring a bell. Pardon? The name does ring oh. a bell. Yeah. Yeah. So, a bit of backstory with her: she um lost her arm when she was surfing at the age of thirteen on Halloween. So that's a bit of a scary day. I yeah. Know, but she's from um Kauai in Hawaii. Um <laughs> and yeah, she always was like, she was like, similar like me, like how I want to be Olympian, she wanted to be a professional surfer. And I think like, losing your arm is something that is challenging on its own, but also if you want to, you know, to be a professional surfer, it's, having two arms is, you know, is quite handy to have. Mm. Uh, but she didn't, let, she didn't let us stop that, you know, she was like, um, you know, the shark didn't kill me. So, and... I know what I want to do in my life and you know she did extra strength work extra what she had to do her dad was a coach as well um, which he knew her inside and out and he helped her throughout that and then the next year she won her nationals at the age of 14 with one arm and then from there she went on to become a professional surfer so I just see if someone that can lose part of their body and be- become you know world champions professionals then why is that stopping me? You know, I have an extra arm than her, so, <laughs> mm. um, yeah. So I think how, how she took it um, is something I look really up to, yeah. That's awesome. Really. And is would, in, in a sense, yeah. would that be what's kind of led you into your care role as well? Like, because you want to help people like her as well, or am I right in saying that? Um, well, similar, I guess. It just shows that... Um, when you, like, for OT, like, if people, like, you know, lose an arm or, you know, don't 
have something happen traumatically in their lives, people like Bethany in the world is gives people hope mm. and something to inspire to be like and think, wow, you know, that is possible. It's not impossible in life. That are so many different journeys you can take and ways to get there. Um, there's not always one specific way, and that's what makes us human as well. We're all individual, and um, what one way may work for someone may not work for them, but there are so many ways to try, and um, yeah. And like people say, many roads lead to Rome, so um, <laughs> you just got to find your one, and that's what I'll want to do and help people through that as well. So, yeah. That is awesome. Yeah. Well, you've got a very um, amazing sort of – way about you. you you sound so young but yet you seem so old in a sense in the way that you you've traveled through life so far and uh yeah i just want to say well done on what you've achieved i do have one last question for you what were the what words of advice would you give to those that are starting out in the sport or uh not, not only race walking but everything what, what what words of advice would you give them um i think just don't um get caught up with the whole winning so early on um you know winning at you know 10 is amazing um but in saying that i don't remember people that are one at 10 when i'm when i make when i'm 19 right now like i don't remember anyone like that so i think don't get caught up with the whole winning just get i think you should just embrace being healthy doing what you love and just taking each step as it comes um each team as it comes embracing all the friendships because if you keep loving it and you and that keeps motivating you then you'll end up finding yourself, you know, in an Australian team or somewhere that where you strive to be and then you'll stop like I did. <laughs> well, you just think, wow, how did I get here? This is such an insane period in my life and it was through just constant love and not constant, I've got to win, 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 win. It's different mentality and I think that's where a lot of kids get lost up and um, get stressed and high anxiety and, and that's where we lose them. And it's sad but true, and I think we need to, yeah, um, have a massive support around how we um, move our kids up to the next level in seniors because um, we have a lot, a lot of, um, um, what's the word, um, <laughs> talented kids out there hmm. that we are losing. So, yeah. Well, I <laughs> wish you the best of luck in your future. Many green and gold moments ahead for you. Um, you're only 19, as you said, so it's kind of scary. Um, yeah, um, no. Um, this Tuesday coming. Okay, so you're yeah. 18. That makes it even better. Um, yes, I'm calling myself 19 at the moment. <laughs> you're, you're allowed to do that. Wait until you get to 22 when you can sing Taylor Swift. That's the best part. Oh, that's what I'm planning to do. It's like, that. you got to do it. <laughs> I did. And I'm, yeah, I'm a dude. All right, so, well, thank you very much for joining me. Um, and, yeah, I wish you the best of luck uh, on your day and, of course, this year leading up to World Champs and next year, 2020, uh, Tokyo. Uh, thank, you. thank you so much. That's okay. We'll Bye. catch you later. Bye. There we had the very inspiring Katie Hayward. Uh, we wish her the very best uh, 2020 vision on her green and gold journey. She is going to be very successful, as well as Anna. I think them both are being on the podcast. Uh, so uh, that comes to the end of episode 12. I thank you very much for joining me. Uh, join me next week. Who knows who we're going to get. Thank you for listening to another episode of 2020 Vision. If you want to find us elsewhere, go to Podbean, YouTube, or Spotify and type in 2020 Vision. You can also find us on Facebook. Thank you very much for joining us, and we'll see you again next week.